Stan Jabalisco back again. Uh, actually, this is a continuation of the video entitled What is a Charge Carrier? And this is, in fact, the drawing that I left off with at the end of that video, minus the snark tags. Uh, so what we have here then basically is an illustration showing electrical charge carriers in an atom and those charge carriers in common elect electricity phenomena that you observe in everyday life are usually electrons. This is what they call a Bohr atom named after Niels Bohr, the physicist who devised the whole notion in the first place. Concentration of heavy dense particles in the center of the atom is the nucleus has a positive charge and the electrons orbit that nucleus orbit in quotes with a negative charge and the electrons are held into their orbit by the attractive force between the positive and the negative charges in much the same way as the gravitation between the earth and the sun or between the earth and the moon keep the earth in orbit around the sun and or the moon in orbit around the earth respectively something like that but something very interesting happens these electrical charges negative in the case of an electron and positive in the case of a proton as i just said they have an a, a they tend to attract each other with a with a measurable force electrostatic force and that electrostatic force will if allowed to operate without anything counteracting it result in a flow or movement continuously of electrons towards positive charge poles such as the nucleus of an atom if these electrons were somehow for some reason to stop moving then presumably they would fall into the nuclei of the atoms now, i don't believe we've ever seen that occur they can be driven in there by powerful crushing force of gravitation say in the center of a neutron star but that's a, a topic for a whole nother video so let's start a whole nother page just like Texas is a whole nother country South Dakota is a whole nother universe. And this is a whole nother page. And what I'm going to do is draw a bunch of atoms in a very simplistic way. These dots are the nuclei and the circles around them represent electrons in quote unquote orbit around these nuclei. And this is the way that you might find atoms arranged in a rarefied substance such as a gas imagine many many more of them more tightly packed together and then you might have these are all copper just imagine that so we have a copper wire these are the individual atoms these little dots in the center are the nuclei copper nuclei comprising a bunch of protons and a bunch of neutrons all stuck together in a kind of a kind of a glob like remember those things they used to make out of those rice or or rice cereals puffed rice or puffed uh, puffed corn or puffed wheat or something like that and you can put syrup on them and stick them all together with raisins you know and then you get the raisins or the protons and the and the puffed wheat is the neutrons and it's it's the raisins that give you the charge right but anyway then I don't know what would be in orbit around them. If I ate very many of them, I would be in orbit, that's for sure, because of my metabolism. But anyway, these snark tags are back. But I'm, now I'm snarking myself. But anyway, um, I better erase that. Now, as I said, charge carriers are usually electrons, and they can migrate from atom to atom and generally every time you get an atom or an electron migrating from an atom like this from left to right some other electron has to flow in and replace it and it will in general if you have a bunch of electrons flowing from atom to atom from left to right here then the negative charge pole is off to the left 
That's where the overabundance of electrons lies. And the positive charge pole is off to the right. So you get an electron current. That is a flow. Current, just like a river. In a river, the current is a flow of water. In a copper wire, the electric current is a flow more or less a sort of a flow of electrons. It's really not a smooth continuous flow though. It's more like a bunch of little jumps. A bunch of little jumps. Now, the water in a river really does flow but the current in a copper wire doesn't exactly flow. You will oftentimes hear them talking about current flow or a flow of charge carriers but again that flow should be in quotes just like the orbit is in quotes. The snark sure isn't in quotes, though. Stan Jabalisco signing off. Hope that gives you an idea. That's what elect electric current usually is in common applications. Now, there are excep exceptions. There are other ways to define electrical currents. And in fact, in some cases, the charge carriers aren't even electrons in which case the current is entirely different. But in an ordinary electrical application like your household utility circuit, copper wire, or in some cases maybe aluminum wire, uh, which is also a good conductor of electricity, meaning that it, a current can flow, in quotes, easily through such a, such a medium. Well, now I'll sign off. Stan Gibalisco. Good luck. Sleep tight. So long.